you are back in the ICC on Sunday the 13th yeah. of October because you're introducing this sporting life, which was the first explosion of the career of yeah. the great actor, great Irish actor, Richard Harris. Yeah. You went on to work with him in the field yeah. later on. In order to try and maintain some control, we did a scene where Richard um, did the scene. I didn't like it. And he went nuts. And I said to him, I'd redo the scene on the last day in Ardmore Studios in Dublin. And that was a kind of unconscious way of me controlling the shoot. And I made him agree to that. And because I was willing to go down the line of being fired. So anyway, we got to the Ardmore on the after we finished and he watched the scene and he said it's the best performance he ever gave and he's not fucking doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> I took the metaphor of the field to represent Ireland and the necessity for the possession of land by small tenants, you know. God made the world and see we'd made that field and your sons, 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 sons will take care of it, boy. I want to sell the field. Is it Paul McCabe's field? He rents it. It was bare rock when he got it, ma'am. It will be sold by public auction. Yes, who would insult me by bidding for my field? There might be outsiders, but... <laughs> outsiders? These the same outsiders who drove us to the coffin ships and scattered us to the four corners of the earth. No outsider will bid for my field. 60 pounds? 65 pounds. It's the widow's field. She has the right to sell it. There's limestone down there, and there's enough limestone up there to build highways all over Ireland. Those hands, do you see those hands? I dug the rocks out of it with my bare hands and I made a living thing. Don't you understand? An outsider has come to bury my sweat and my blood in concrete. We all know how to deal with robbers. Be a good yank. Turn around and never set foot here again. Who the hell do you think you are? Where are you going, Bob? To the edge of the world. Rorak! Rorak! Your father's got mad. Look at yourself, will you? Look at yourself! It's the same dilemma as Native American Indians. They never had possession of the land. And because the Irish guy um, is renting the land and he's improved it, he thinks he owns it. And people don't get that. They're so capitalist, so property oriented, that they don't get the communal thing, you know? It was amazing to work with Harris. It was mad you know like very different to daniel day yeah. who came back acting today did you yeah. see that yeah yeah we did see that yeah he's doing it with ron and his son That's um right. which is good news i hope he enjoys it yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you of course were there at the beginning of daniel's career yeah yeah well you know that's a kind of people think that and because he was nominated for an academy award for and won for my left foot they think kind of, oh, Jim made him, and it's kind of the other way around. Mm -hmm. Daniel was a pretty well-known actor who I saw on screen and thought, can I get that guy? And mm -hmm. he was so un-Irish up to that. He was like upper-class yeah. British. Yeah. But his father was an Irish mm -hmm. poet, mm -hmm. poet laureate of England, mm. actually. You mean I didn't have to get killed for it? This is a man, and what a man. A man of violent contrasts. A man greater than ordinary men in his strength and in his love. Richard Harris, in a performance you will never forget. We must go back to this sporting life for a yeah. moment because you're going to introduce yeah. it on the 13th yeah. of October. Yeah. Why, why should people come to the ICC on it's a Sunday a, afternoon to see that movie? It's a fabulous movie. And I suppose because I'll be able to recount, you know, 
Richard's life and give you a bigger insight into the movie, into Anderson, who was a very good director and had an Irish, another Irish actor, Frank Grimes. Frank Grimes, yeah. Who he, he, he yeah. kind of brought to some fame. That's right. I mean, they He's worked really show, well together. They, Frank they lives up the road, by the way. He's Does a great he? friend of mine, yeah. God, I haven't seen him for... Yeah. I played the part of being after Frank. Oh, right. <laughs> fortunately, yeah. Great. Um, and will you be yeah. dishing the dirt? Will there be some gossip? Oh, there'll be a lot of gossip. You know, if you come, uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll get the inside story on Richard, including his stay in the hotel near here, <laughs> uh, Holland Park. Oh, yeah. His wife used to run it. Mm-hmm. And uh, That's right. I, my daughter got her eyes done, Tess, and she could suddenly see, and she went through Heathrow or were one of them and said to me, Dad, don't keep getting me everything that's in duty free. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I said to her, well, what do you want? And she said, I'd like those little jams, you know, the jams you get yeah, with a yeah. cross on. So I was like, that's, that's what you want, yeah. So when I was with Harris in the hotel, I said to him, Oh, I have to get across on Richard and I have to get to the airport. And, you know, Shepherd's Bush is probably the most accessible to Heathrow. So up came the fella with the croissant and the jam and I left the jams there and went to the loo. And when I came out, there was no jams, <laughs> but the taxi was ready. <laughs> so I said to Richard, where's the, where's the effing jams? At the, did your man come back up? And he's just looking at me. <laughs> so I said, like, where am I going to get the jam? And he reached down, and from under the bed, he pulled out a bag about three feet long <laughs> and two foot high with about 9,000 jams in it. Oh, right, God. <laughs> <laughs> he was hoarding all the jams in the Halcyon Hotel. Oh, wow. And that's what he was like. He was compulsive and crazy on oh, every wow. level. If you want to hear more tales like that, you need to be at the ICC yeah, yeah. on Sunday, October the 13th. Thank you so much, Thank Jim. Thank you so much. It's it was a brilliant. pleasure. And here Thank is a you. little Thanks, bit Jim. from... Brilliant to have you here. Here's a little bit from The Sporting Life. He loved a good time, and yet he turned his back on it for a ruthless, overwhelming I love. You. Now, who want to crush me, but I won't let you, because I'm the one thing you can't have like everything else. I want you! I want you to go. I need you! I want you to go. I want you to go! I want you to go! <laughs> Rachel Roberts as Margaret Hammond. Savagely embittered by life, she returned his love with a burning, passionate hate. They all laugh at you. They all point you out. Don't you know that? Trying to be different. And they point me out too, Andy and Anne Linda. We're not proper people now because of you. Because no sure other film has ever happen. brought life to the screen with such brutal honesty. This sporting life brings you face to face with people. It compels you to love. It forces you to hate. It takes you to the very center of a man's passion and a woman's heart.